If there's something that draws attention in South Korea, besides K-pop and cutting-edge technology, it's the height of the new generations. If we compare young Koreans today with their grandparents, the difference is stark. But what is behind this accelerated growth? Is it just genetics or is there something much deeper going on? The truth is that the answer may surprise you and at the same time, reveal a secret that few talk about human development. Over the past few decades, South Korea has undergone a radical transformation. What was once a country ravaged by war and famine has become one of the most powerful economies in the world. And with this rise came a visible change in the stature of the population. But how did this happen? What made Koreans jump from an average height considered low to being among the tallest in Asia? Did food play a crucial role? Or was the advancement of medicine and quality of life largely responsible? And there's more. This phenomenon didn't just happen in Korea. In several countries, economic development directly influenced the height of new generations. But is there a limit to this growth? And above all, what are the consequences of this change for Korean society? Get ready, because the answer to these questions could change the way you see the relationship between nutrition, health, and even aesthetic standards. So if you want to understand once and for all why Koreans are getting taller and taller, and how this could reveal an essential detail about human evolution, stay with me. You will discover surprising facts that go far beyond what Korean dramas and K-pop stages show. Are Koreans really tall? If there's one thing that might catch a lot of people by surprise, it's the fact that Koreans are among the tallest people in Asia. The average height of Korean men is around 1.74 M, while women reach around 1.62 M. To give you an idea, Korean women are the tallest on the continent, surpassing even Japanese and Chinese women. The men, although they are behind the Iranians, who have an average of 1.75 M, still have a respectable height. But why has their height attracted so much attention in recent years? The growth of new generations can yield some very interesting clues. Speaking of generations, there is a curious detail. Young Koreans are noticeably taller than their grandparents. If you've ever watched a drama or followed content about South Korea, you may have noticed this difference. Elderly Koreans are generally much shorter than today's young people, and this is not a coincidence. Just look at family photos to see that the leap in height between parents and children is impressive. But what happened to make this change happen so drastically? The answer lies in something that directly influences the health and development of any person, nutrition and quality of life. This phenomenon is not exclusive to South Korea. The same happened in several countries that underwent major socioeconomic changes. In Japan, for example, average height increased significantly after World War II. In Europe, the same thing happened after the Industrial Revolution, when nutrition and living conditions improved. And here comes the question, was it just a matter of genetics in the case of Koreans? Spoiler, no. The transformation of Korean society throughout the 20th century played a fundamental role in this change. But to understand this, we need to go back in time a little and look at the difficulties faced by past generations. The truth is, if we look at the history of South Korea, we will see that the country did not always have the ideal conditions for healthy growth. Wars, occupations, and economic crises marked the trajectory of many generations. However, as the years passed, something began to change. The economy strengthened, the quality of life improved, and as a result, new generations began to reach greater and greater heights. But is this generational difference limited only to height? Or are there other factors that have influenced the physical development of Koreans over the years? Why is there this difference between generations? If we look at the older generations in South Korea, it is clear that their average height is much smaller than that of today's young people. And this has a very clear reason. The conditions in which these people grew up were much more difficult. During the Japanese occupation, 1910 to 1945, Korea went through a period of extreme poverty and scarcity. Access to adequate food was a luxury for few, and many children grew up with severe nutritional deficits. This directly impacted population growth at that time. A body that does not receive the necessary nutrients simply cannot develop fully. 
and this is reflected in height. And as if the Japanese occupation wasn't enough, the Korean War, 1950-1953, came soon after to make the situation even worse. The destruction was massive, leaving the country in ruins and the population without basic resources. During this period, hunger was a constant reality, and many families had to make do with what little they could find. The childhood of many elderly Koreans was marked by a lack of protein and an extremely limited diet. This explains why the grandparents and great-grandparents of today's Koreans are noticeably shorter than the younger generations. The human body responds directly to the environment in which it grows, and at that time, the environment was far from favorable. But then, what changed? In the 1960s, South Korea began its impressive economic rise. The country has gone from a war-torn economy to one of the richest and most technologically advanced nations in the world. And this transformation has not only impacted infrastructure and industry, but also people's everyday lives. Access to quality food has improved. Health services have become more efficient and hygiene and sanitation conditions have evolved. This created a perfect environment for new generations to grow healthier and taller. The curious thing is that this phenomenon didn't just happen in South Korea. Countries like Japan and China also experienced growth in the average height of their population as their economies developed. This leads us to an interesting question. What role does food play in this process? After all, where do the nutrients that allow this growth come from? The answer lies in one of the most important factors for human development, food. Food and growth. If there is something that directly influences a person's growth, it is food. In the past, the Korean diet was mainly based on rice, vegetables, and small amounts of protein. Meat was a luxury, and dairy products were practically non-existent in most families' diets. This type of diet, although healthy in some aspects, did not provide the nutrients necessary for full growth. Without enough protein, the body cannot develop muscles and bones optimally, which of course directly affects height. It is no surprise that the older generations in South Korea are considerably smaller in stature compared to today's young people. But then came South Korea's economic boom, and with it, a change in eating habits. From the 1960s onwards, the country began to import more food and invest in the production of meat, milk, and eggs. The Korean diet started to include much more animal protein, and that made all the difference. Milk consumption, for example, became common among children, which contributed to more efficient bone growth. And if there's a clear example of this, just look at today's young Koreans. They are taller, healthier, and developed physically very differently from past generations. This phenomenon did not just happen in South Korea. The same pattern was observed in other countries that underwent economic and nutritional transformations. Japan, for example, saw its population grow in height after World War II, when meat and dairy consumption increased. In Europe, the Industrial Revolution also brought improvements in nutrition, directly impacting people's development. The average height of a population is directly linked to the quality of their diet and South Korea is an excellent example of how this works in practice. The interesting thing is that, in addition to growth and height, the dietary change also had other impacts on the health of Koreans. With more access to proteins and vitamins, the immune systems of new generations became stronger, reducing the incidence of childhood illnesses. But was all this transformation just beneficial? Or did some challenges come along with this change? When we talk about health, the issue goes beyond nutrition and also involves access to quality medical services. Health and quality of life. It's not enough to just eat well to grow taller. Your overall health needs to follow this development. And that's exactly what happened in South Korea. With the country's modernization, the healthcare system underwent a revolution, ensuring that children receive the necessary care from the first years of life. Vaccination has become accessible to everyone preventing diseases that could previously compromise child development. Additionally, routine exams and pediatric follow-up became common, ensuring that any problems were identified and treated early. All this was reflected not only in the height of the population, but also in the longevity and quality of life of Koreans. Another factor that drove this change 
was the improvement of sanitary conditions. In the past, the lack of basic sanitation was a serious problem in the country, resulting in infections and diseases that directly affected children's growth. But with economic advancement came sewage networks, drinking water, and better hygiene conditions. And that made all the difference. Today, South Korea has one of the most developed health infrastructures in the world, ensuring a much more favorable environment for healthy population growth. Furthermore, the focus on health did not stop a childhood. Koreans have adopted a culture of well-being that is reflected in many aspects of everyday life. Habits such as regular physical exercise, a balanced diet, and the consumption of nutritional supplements are common among young people. Gyms, sports, and practices such as walking are part of the routine of most Koreans. This continuous care of the body not only helps with height, but also ensures that the population remains active and healthy throughout the years. But, as in any society, not everything is rosy. Aesthetic pressure in South Korea has also grown considerably over the decades. With an increasingly demanding beauty standard, many Koreans resort to aesthetic procedures to achieve the appearance considered ideal. But does this quest for perfection have limits? And to what extent has plastic surgery become part of the country's cultural identity? The relationship between development and height. There's a very interesting pattern when we look at the most developed countries in the world. Their populations tend to be higher. This is not a coincidence. The average height of a population is directly linked to the quality of nutrition, the health system, and living conditions in general. In South Korea, this relationship has become quite evident in recent decades. As the country grew economically and improved its infrastructure, its inhabitants also began to grow, literally. The same phenomenon can be observed in countries such as the Netherlands, Norway, and Germany, which have some of the highest populations on the planet and, not surprisingly, are among the most developed nations. On the other hand, countries that still face socioeconomic difficulties tend to have lower populations. Places like Timor-Leste and the Philippines, for example, have much lower average heights than developed nations. This is because child malnutrition is still a serious problem in these places, compromising the growth of new generations. The lack of access to foods rich in essential proteins, vitamins, and minerals means that many children do not reach their maximum development potential. It is a cruel cycle in which short stature ends up being a reflection of the adverse conditions in which these people live. But it's not just about genetics or diet. The very environment in which a child grows up influences their physical development. Studies have already shown that children exposed to high levels of stress, food insecurity, and poor hygiene conditions tend to have slower growth. South Korea, by investing heavily in infrastructure, sanitation, and quality of life, ensured that its new generations could fully develop. This explains why the country made such a leap in the average height of its population in such a short period of time. And this evolution at the time was not the only aesthetic transformation that Koreans went through. In recent years, the search for a perfect appearance has led South Korea to become one of the world's largest centers for plastic surgery. But is this obsession with aesthetics just a matter of vanity, or is there a deeper cultural and social factor behind it? Plastic surgeries and aesthetic standards. If there is a place in the world where aesthetics is taken seriously, that place is South Korea. The country has not only stood out in terms of growing heights for its generations, but has also become a true global hub for plastic surgery. In neighborhoods like Gangnam, there are more than 400 clinics specializing in aesthetic procedures, attracting Koreans and foreigners looking for a more harmonious look. And this isn't just limited to women. Korean men also invest heavily in appearance care, including skin treatments, waxing, and even facial surgery to soften features considered undesirable. The Korean beauty standard requires a delicate face flawless skin and refined features, a reflection of the country's highly competitive culture. But why do so many people resort to plastic surgery in South Korea? The answer goes far beyond simple vanity. In the Korean job market, appearance can be a decisive factor when getting a job. Many companies value candidates with symmetrical features and well-groomed skin, as they believe this conveys professionalism and reliability. 
To stand out in a society where competition is extreme, many young people feel they need to meet these standards from an early age. It is no surprise that, upon reaching the age of majority, some people receive cosmetic surgery as a gift from their parents, as if it were an investment for the future. And anyone who thinks that surgeries are limited to small corrections is mistaken. Procedures such as double eyelid surgery, rhinoplasty, and even changes to the bone structure of the face are extremely popular. Some people even modify their jawline to make their face thinner and more delicate, a complex but highly sought after procedure. This level of transformation raises questions about the extent to which aesthetic pressure can influence an individual's choices. After all, how many of these people really want to undergo these procedures and how many do it out of pure social necessity? What we cannot deny is that this search for aesthetic perfection has become a striking aspect of Korean culture. And this leads us to an interesting reflection. While height growth in South Korea was driven by improvements in nutrition and health, the aesthetic transformation was shaped by social pressure and the country's demanding standards. But is this obsession with appearance here to stay, or are we about to see a change in beauty ideals? Now that you know why Koreans are getting taller and taller, one question remains. Is height really just a matter of genetics, or can your lifestyle also directly influence your development? The case of South Korea makes it clear that factors such as nutrition, health and quality of life play a crucial role in how our bodies develop. So, what can you change in your own routine to improve your health and well-being? Is your diet providing everything your body needs? And beyond height, this transformation makes us think about something even bigger. The impact of the environment on our growth, both physical and mental. If Korea managed to change so much in just a few decades, what can each of us do to evolve and develop better? What are you doing today to ensure that your health, your diet, and even your posture are aligned with your future? Could it be that, in the same way that Koreans invested in changes that transformed their lives, you could also invest in small improvements in your daily life? Now I want to know your opinion. Have you ever noticed that Koreans were getting taller? What surprised you most about this transformation? Leave your comment below. I want to know what you think about this phenomenon. And of course, if you want to continue learning about incredible curiosities like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell. This way, you don't miss any new content and continue discovering more surprising facts about the world.